Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. Okay, you guys got quite a few things to talk about. I asked for you guys to give me some suggestions on Instagram, and this is the result. First up, you guys know how we do. I always got to do serious subjects first. Uh, news that hit yesterday, Ray Nagan, who is the um, mayor of New Orleans, or I guess former mayor of New Orleans now, um, was sentenced yesterday in a federal case um, for money laundering, larceny, and bribery, among other corruption. It was a very large corruption case that the feds were, you know, prosecuting him against, um, and they were saying that he was part of a kickback scheme where, you know, um, in exchange for contracts to, you know, rejuvenate and revive and rebuild in the city, um, these different contractors were giving him money um, for personal use, flying him all over the place uh, on vacation, him and his family. And they say it was in the form of like wired money or, you know, checks or just basically cash given to him. Um, and like I said, free travel for him and his family to Hawaii, Jamaica, New York, among other places. So, yeah, hum humongous case out there in New Orleans. And they, everybody seems to have an opinion about it. They say that he basically awarded $5 million in city contracts to these different contractors. And, you know, with all that being done, he received maybe a half a million dollars in kickbacks. Ray Nagin, of course, has always said that he was innocent. And, um... Yeah, I can tell you guys, to tell you guys the truth, I really don't know much about this case because I have, I don't live in New Orleans and I never follow what goes on in New Orleans, but, um, so I don't really know what opinion to have on this other than, you know, I work for the government now and I've worked for the government <laughs> pretty much since I was like 25 years old. And, um, I can tell you that this kind of stuff happens all the time in government. You have people that are in high places that you know have control over the money and the contracts in it within their city or within the state or whatever and um, a lot of times they, there are kickbacks that's given to these people all the time I mean it happens so much that you you would not even believe it might not be on this big of a scale but this kind of thing happens all the time you know people are saying that uh, is be, you know he was given such a, 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 a huge sentence because he was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison up in Oakdale, Louisiana. That's where they have suggested for him to go. Evidently there are some other New Orleans um, uh, politicians out there. I guess a guy named Edwin Edwards and William Jefferson. Um, so he'll be you know he'll be amongst friends. Folks are saying that if he wasn't black he wouldn't have gotten any time and they're also saying that he was you know kind of the scapegoat for this they say that he was not the head of the um this whole ring but they said that he was involved um i, I don't even really know what to say like you know if there's proof that he's been doing these things then I mean, you know, there, there has to be some sort of repercussions for what you do. Now, everybody is saying that he probably should have gotten, um, you know, reduced time or he should have gotten, um, you know, just probation or whatever. I don't, I don't even really know what to say about that, okay? I just don't really know. He benefited from it, even though he benefited in such a small amount. So maybe 10 years does seem like that's a lot. But I think that... The bigger issue here is that they're just trying to crack down on corruption whichever way that they can. Y'all, I don't, I don't really have, an, I don't want to say either way it goes. All I can tell you is that it happens a lot. Um, and a lot of people don't get caught. But a lot of people do get caught. I had something like this, similar to this, on a way smaller scale happen where I work right now. The gentleman, or there were a couple of people that were involved and they were caught. And they're in jail right now. They got a couple of years. But then again, they were black. So, you know, I don't even really know what to say about it other than I'm going to let the New Orleans people, the people that live there, that know more about it, maybe you guys can weigh in on it. It seems kind of harsh to me, but, you know, I can't say if you're breaking laws and, you know, breaking rules and shit, then, you know, something has to be done here. We can't be going and say, oh, because he's black as this, or, you know, it's just... This is what it is. Fuck, don't do it. Okay? So, like I said, he maintains that he's been innocent all this time. And uh, I don't even really know if this is a case where it can be appealed. 
um, or if this is just a done deal and bruh man on his way up to um, to jail up in Oakdale, they're saying that his sentence is supposed to start in September. On September 8th, he's, he's expected to report up there, but yeah, I don't know. I just want you guys to tell me what you think about it. You know, it's such a touchy subject with it being New Orleans and all of the shit that happened there. Um, you know, you just get the feeling like you get mad that, you know, you have people that are that are misusing or misappropriating funds um, on the backs of people that suffered, okay? Um, it's so much confusion about this case. Like yesterday I was on the internet and I was looking at some people that were talking and in some comment sections on some blogs, somebody said, oh, he, he, he finally said that they, they bombed the levees. You know, that was always some, it's sort of like this urban legend that the, the levees were bombed and that was, the, you know, because they're trying to get rid of all the black people in New Orleans. Um, because the black areas were the most hard hit. Um, but as far as I know, the man did not ever say that that's what the case was. Now, if I'm wrong, somebody let me know. But I know I ain't, I just don't think I have heard that he agreed that, I mean, that he said, he admitted that the levees were bombed. So, like I'm saying, it's a lot of confusion and a lot of misinformation out there about it. And that's why I don't really want to speak on it. I don't live in New Orleans. And New Orleans is, um, I, I have some family that's in Louisiana. However, they weren't in New Orleans, so they weren't, uh, you know, directly affected. However, we all know somebody that, you know, got fucked up from the New Orleans um, flooding. Um, here in Atlanta, a lot of them moved from New Orleans here to Atlanta. So, you know, it's a lot that goes on with it. So I'm just, I'm not going to say much, much else about it other than, yeah, it seems like it's kind of a long, big sentence. If you, if you have anything else that you need to add to it down in the comments, y'all, y'all, I'm going to let y'all have this one, okay? Another story that somebody wanted me to talk about was the immigrant kids that are passing, um, that are crossing the border into the United States from Mexico. This is another <laughs> topic. You guys, I am not really a po politically motivated person, and I don't pay too much attention to that, and so it's, it is my ignorance, I know. Um, I got too much shit that goes on in my own life, <laughs> really, to be worried about all these, ex all these other things, although I know it affects me in the long run. So, um... I'm just going to give you my opinion on this whole immigrant children crossing the border um, into the United States. If I was to tell you, if somebody asked me right off the bat, what did I feel about these kids coming over? My immediate feeling is we need to send them on back over there and let that, let that be Mexico's problem. Now, that is my surface answer. Um, I'm sure that this is something that really requires a whole lot more you know, in-depth look at, um, but when I just think about the shit that goes on in the United States and all the problems that we have, you know, and us taking on more problems of a foreign country, their children coming here, um, it just makes me feel like, no, we don't need nothing extra and send them on back. Now, of course, we have to look at the reasons why these kids are leaving Mexico in the first place, and we don't have to even look that far. We know that it's extreme po poverty out there. They probably are facing a lot of abuse, a lot of hunger. You know, it's a lot of issues that's there, and they feel that if they come to the United States, then they have, a, you know, a better opportunities here. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's just kids coming, okay? And, um, you know, their parents are not with them. And um, so now, all of a sudden, we got to be taking care of these children. You, you start to worry, like, okay, if we send them back, are we sending them back to something that's really horrible? Like, okay, then you start thinking about the humanitarian part of it. If you were to see just an, an average kid on the street being beat, you know, or if, even if they weren't being beat, if you just saw a kid on the street by themselves, you can tell that they haven't ate or been, you know, they're dirty and they are by themselves, I mean, what do you do? I mean, the average person would not ignore this child. So, when you look at it on a grand scale like that, then it kind of seems like you're being kind of, you know, harsh towards these children. This whole big debate with the, with the Democrats and the Republicans, Republicans are very upset with President Obama um, because President Obama wants to have like a $1.8 billion um, <clears throat> basically the check written to to secure the borders and the republicans don't want to do that okay the republicans feel like they can't trust that he is going to be successful in keeping these kids uh from coming over and uh, they don't want to give that 
you know, they don't want to sign for that kind of money to be going to the borders, which is a concern, okay? So, like I read on the internet, there was a, a, a Democrat, this lady that said, well, you know, the Republicans are cutting off and, you know, just trying to hold his hands at any instance. It's sort of like a house being on fire, okay? Well, you can't complain that the house is on fire and then cut off the water supply to put the fire out, okay? Perfect, perfect, perfect examples. Like, I don't really know what they want to do. They're complaining about these kids coming over. Um, but then they don't trust that the money is going to be used appropriately. And we know that, you know, the United States already got money issues to begin with. So, very difficult very difficult situation I, I just and then I have to think about like my best friend is Belizean and so I know a lot of her family that have come over that are here illegal or you know illegal immigrants or whatever um, I don't want my best friend's family to just have to go back over across the border and things like that so it's a whole lot to think about um, we all know somebody, you might not know it, but we all know somebody that are here illegally. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know, but, but these kids coming across, I, I feel bad saying it, but just my immediate response feels like they, they should, they should um, come back. But like the Democrats are saying, we just need a little bit more information on how we expect to make this thing happen. Um, I don't have no 1.8 billion dollars just be given you know just for some old bullshit i don't think that the the plan that president obama has mapped out <clears throat> just from me reading up on it these last you know this last day or so i don't think that the um president has necessarily mapped out exactly what they plan on doing to make this happen so yeah it's, it's definitely a concern and um, you guys tell me what do you think because these kids are coming over in droves I think they said it's been over 50,000 children since October um, that are just coming over and you know we got to be trying to figure out what we're doing with them and how to feed them and clothe them and house them and all of that so it's a lot you guys tell me exactly what you think about these Im immigrant children coming over into the United States should they stay or should they go All right, violence in Chicago. You guys, a lot of people have sent me a lot of different, like, local news things that you want me to talk about. And, you know, it's hard to read. I just didn't have time to be researching all these local things that have happened. So I really only am going to talk about things that are on a very global scale or a large national scale that we all hear about. So I'm talking about this violence in Chicago because I just keep on hearing about this violence in Chicago. Evidently, they had a very large um, amount of people that were killed and injured over the 4th of July weekend. And people are getting very frustrated about the issues in Chicago. Um, they're saying that it's a few different reasons um, from inadequate policing, poverty, and lax gun laws. Okay, inadequate policing. You guys know that, well, I mean, you probably, I mean, you should probably do know, but government basically is just cutting money back all across the board. And a lot of times the police department, the fire department, they're getting hit the most, okay, which probably shouldn't be the departments that suffer because we need to have the police on the streets to you know to police the streets okay so when you cut back on the police then that means that you cut back on staff which means there's not a much, as, as much police on the streets which means that crime you know they can't be 15 places at once so if they all over here trying to work on this well there's a whole bunch of mayhem and craziness going on over there that's being unchecked so you know, inadequate policing is is a definite problem and something that they need to do about. Now, poverty, um, of course, lack of jobs. You know, people are broke. They frustrated. They ain't got shit to do but sit around and figure out a way to come up, okay? Um, you got these people who are so um, just really kind of at their wits end and don't know what to do. Doing all kind of things. Robbing, joining gangs, you know, um cheating stealing whatever they got to do to get by if there are no jobs around for these people to you know refocus themselves then they are going to continue to do this type of crime now <clears throat> i know there's been a lot of things that happen in chicago a lot of large manufacturers that have left out and um with them 
the jobs have gone. So, it's, you know, like I say, these people just sitting around with just nothing. You guys know they say, you know, I don't mind, honey, is the devil's playground. It's all kind of shit goes on when you ain't got shit to do and you ain't got no money. That's another one of the issues. And then the lax gun laws. They got a lot of illegal guns on the street and everybody just basically is shooting each other. It's like the fucking Wild Wild West in 2014 in the middle in the mid is chicago called continue considered midwest yeah i think that's considered midwest right and and then that is on a bigger scale of this whole gun laws all these issues with gun laws and people wanting to have the right to bear arms and you know it's the good and bad about being in in the united states okay freedom of speech and freedom to do this and that because those are all our rights but then the right sometimes fucks up everything else okay so you got the right to bear arms and everybody got these fucking guns and they're killing each other okay it's just <laughs> united states could be their own enemy sometimes to me i don't really know what is going to have to happen to get these guns off these streets um but chicago seems it reminds me a lot of what was going on in LA back in the 80s back when I was back in the 80s I'm telling you it was so much shooting and killing going on it was a it was a gang war going on back then between the blood and the crips and I promise you every single every single night there was always a shooting you could hear gunshots I mean I would hear it when I would go to sleep it just became a part of it I was used to it and actually up until you know even when we left LA back in 2004 it was kind of starting up again i lived in and i didn't even live in a bad neighborhood i mean we lived in the hood because everybody i mean almost all of la is the hood really it wasn't no bad neighborhood to me <laughs> um and um but we still lived close enough where we could hear gunshots all the time all the time okay and people were getting killed left and right and uh, so, you know, in Chicago, it might be a little bit more of that going on, too. It might be some gangs going on. You know, I don't really know who's down there. The Disciples and the, the Lords. And, the, you know, they got all these different names, these gangs out there. Uh, but whatever it is, I don't know. I, I want Chicago to get better, man. I mean, they're saying that it is actually getting better. They're saying that, that it's down 6% from last year and um so but i guess that's all relative i mean if you got millions of uh, damn killings <laughs> what's six percent less okay but i mean it is less but we still need to something needs to happen in chicago but you know on a on a big scale now i don't know how these things are going to happen but that is what needs to happen we need some jobs we need the guns off the street and we need more police um so that is it on that is that all my serious subjects that I got on here? Yeah, I think that's all my serious subjects. So yeah, y'all tell me what you think. Let's get on to the bullshit. Hey, you guys. So the big talk is Apollo. You guys all know by now that Apollo Nida, who is the husband of uh, Phaedra Parks, he pled guilty to, you know, committing fraud and money laundering and check writing, cashing, you know, false false identity stealing all kind of shit that he was doing he, he was found guilty back in may he um i mean he pled guilty back in may and they say because he cooperated with the government um he was facing i believe 20 years and they gave him eight years fed time and five years of probation when he gets out they gave him um so much time because they said that there was a fear of recidivism, okay, which <laughs> recidivism means that there are fear that he would repeat, you know, go back to the life of crime if he was in for any less time. Um, he probably gonna do the shit again when he get out anyway, okay, because, I mean, that's, I, I shouldn't say he probably is, okay, but, I mean, he did it once and he came back out and nobody could really understand. I mean, you were a star in a TV show, uh, a hit reality show, um, and you, you go, you're doing this kind of foolishness. Um, so I wouldn't put it past him if he, you know, he got back out and, and dibble dabbled again, especially since his wife is probably, <laughs> I'm 99% sure that she ain't going to be there waiting for him in, uh, 2022. And he is going to serve all that time or pretty much almost all of that time because it's fed time and fed time means fed times mean the government said, damn it, you're going to sit your ass up in this jail for eight damn years. I I don't really have much of a feeling either way it goes about it. And I mean, I ain't jumping up and down for joy. I ain't never good to see people go to jail. Um, but, you know, he did the shit, okay? And, um, you know, he, he fucked up a lot of people's lives. He's taking people's money, 
folks retirement checks and all that yeah that, that's not good and yeah you gotta pay for it and uh you know you you probably a little stupider that you did it be knowing that you kind of under the scope of everything and you know the public eye everybody is already watching you anyway so I ain't got really nothing else to say about it other than you know I he, he about to be in jail for quite some time um, people are all saying that he, you know, they feel sorry for his children. Yeah, I feel sorry for their ch the, the the kids, you know, and the fact that they're not going to be with their natural dad in in their formative years. Um, but these kids, now, you know, we 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 talking about Phaedra Parks here. We're not talking about just regular Laquanda. Phaedra Parks is going to marry somebody who does well for themselves and them children don't get to know that man as their dad and that's gonna be it now i'm sorry i know that shit sound harsh and everything um but these kids are not gonna remember apollo okay because they're like four and one two somewhere in there right okay yeah no they ain't gonna remember. i mean do you remember when you was four and two years old you got one or two little memories right okay well they gonna be all right <laughs> okay um if anything he is gonna be more affected because he is going to be without his children, okay? Not really the other way around. I mean, that's 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 harsh. I mean, I will say that, you know, kids want to be with their natural kids. I'm just saying that they ain't going to suffer, okay? They're going to be all right. Now, everybody is saying if, you know, they're wondering if, if um, Phaedra is going to have to pay this restitution. Evidently, there's, there's, a, there's a rumor going around that the restitution is $2.3 million. They haven't even had the hearing on the restitution. That's on July 17th. So that's a rumor. They haven't said what he's going to pay back, but they're saying that he's always maintained that Phaedra was completely in the dark and that she was not involved. And evidently, either the government couldn't find anything on her or, you know, him cooperating with the government, you know, cleared Phaedra. I don't really know how that works out. You know, I ain't no lawyer and shit. I don't know, if, but you feel like shit be, you know, you be watching these TV shows and, you, and then you start thinking to yourself like, I bet you he told them if he tell them one thing, then, you know, to clear her name. I don't really know if that's even legal or not, uh, but she's not involved in any way, okay? She wasn't even there for the sentencing. She's not involved and it looks like Phaedra is probably not going to have to have anything to do with the restitution if it's anything set, okay? But again... If you're a lawyer out there and you know better, just go on and let us know down there in the bottom, okay? But yeah, that's it. Apollo will be going uh, to, he, he requested to go to a federal prison out here in Atlanta so he can be close to his family, so his children can visit and everything. And it looks like that they're going to do that. But uh, yeah, that's it. Apollo going to jail, y'all, for 96 months is so funny. Uh, <laughs> the federal, uh, I guess when you be in court for federal crimes, when they sentence you, they always do it in months. I can remember my husband's friend saying that when he got sentenced, he was like a drug dealer or whatever. When he got sentenced, <laughs> he said, they said that he was going to be in jail for like 300 or something months. He said he almost died. He felt like that shit was like life or some shit. He was looking at his woman like, how many years is that? Like 300? That's a fucking long time. He was in jail for a long time, y'all. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it could have been worse for Apollo, but shit, 96 months is still a long time, you know. Well, all I can say is, you know, keep the faith, Apollo. <laughs> Okay, Lil Mo. Lil Mo got all up in her feelings um, during the Essence Festival, I guess Friday night when Prince had his concert and um, was very upset that she and her man had paid for backstage passes or whatever, or backstage access. I think it was like VIP access out, in, um, out during Prince's concert. And she had to go to the bathroom. Well, security told her she couldn't go through her at the time because Prince was coming through. I don't know if Prince was on his way to the stage or if he was taking a break off the stage. Whatever it was, they pushed her ass back and told her, you're going to have to wait. Okay, well, she got very upset about that and took to Instagram and Twitter and posted all this shit about how, you know, he ain't nobody special. You know, it don't make no fucking sense that she got pushing her stomach and that, you know, she don't care that he's Prince. You know, he's human just like anybody else. I mean, you know, I'm paraphrasing for y'all. Y'all want to see the shit that she put up, then y'all just go on and uh, put the shit, see the, y'all just go on and Google it. So, immediately, 
because I guess Lil Mo don't realize that, you know, Prince got old school. He got old school stands and he got new school stands, okay? Mo, much like the Beehive, you know, but most of Prince's um, <laughs> stands, they retired. However, the motherfuckers will come back out if need be. When you just think about it, I mean, we're talking about Lil Mo and Prince, okay? Yes, no one person is any more important than the next person when we just talking about regular human beings, okay? But... A level of respect should be there for Prince, especially since that Prince don't know who the fuck is going through. He didn't say Lil Mo can't go to the bathroom while I'm trying to come through, okay? He probably had nothing to do with that. I mean, he is it's his concert. Maybe he needed to hurry up and get through there because he had a costume change or maybe he had, you know, this is... It's a whole lot of other shit that goes along with it, but just in the just in the general scheme of things, it's like Lil Mo, shut the fuck up, okay? I don't really know what Lil Mo is going through, okay? It's like the child is not old enough to be going through a midlife crisis, but I swear she acted like she is in the middle of a fucking crisis. Okay, this blonde hair, you know, this this guy that she's with, you know, her telling all her business and radio interviews, talking about threesomes and all this, you know, she's gone through some shit on the show, she moved all her family over to LA, you know, she was giving her, her then husband the blues, you know, I just, I got a little question about the thinking process and the emotional and mental stability of Little Mo these days, okay? Not even trying to be shameful. Something is going on with Little Mo because I've always liked her. I always felt that she was kind of normal, but this child seemed like she just didn't went off the deep end, okay? And um, Princess Purple People, honey, they came out and they ripped her a new asshole, okay? And deservedly so because I just feel like she just she just didn't need to do that. Okay, you just don't need to do that. You really need to think about what you say before you. That's why I always say that y'all. What did I, I say? I ain't said it in a long time, but it still rings true. Twitter is the devil. Okay, we got to add Instagram to that too. Okay, it's just entirely too much freedom for celebrities. Y'all need to get y'all motherfucking asses. I'm telling you, if I ever get famous, <laughs> I don't even really want to be famous. I would rather just be rich. Okay, but. I, I would I probably would get off of these social media things because I'm telling you it would drag you in and down like this You know you feel so bad feeling this way about Lil Mo because like I said, I've always liked her She always seemed like she was a cool down-to-earth chick and everything, but I Can't get with this new Lil Mo that we got okay I want somebody to pull that fucking lace front off her head and I want somebody to get her some lipstick that you know go with her skin tone and I want her you know I want you guys you know maybe she don't need no man okay just somebody do something do I need to reach out to him as a prayer Lord please touch Lil Mo right now whatever it is that she's going through Lord touch it and take it away okay and bring us our Lil Mo back the old one that we used to know and love all right in your name we pray amen <laughs> and that's it y'all I don't know what to say about Miss Lil Mo but yeah I bet you ain't gonna be talking about Prince like that. Although she don't seem to care. They asked her what did she think about, you know, all of the people coming for her afterwards. And she said it didn't bother it at all. She had to pee. And she wasn't fixing to get no bladder infection and have to drink no cranberry juice and fuck up her kidneys for Prince. <laughs> okay, so that shit was funny to me. But I was just like, okay, whatever. But, um, and I'm sure Prince don't care, y'all. But, yeah, I'm gonna need a little more to do better. Y'all, that Matthew Knowles is a fucking Rolling Stone, ain't he? <laughs> I don't even really know how long Matthew Knowles, how long has he and Tina Knowles been divorced? You know, I don't even know if he making all these damn babies. Well, that other baby, I think, probably was pro while he was married, because the other baby is older, right? But this child, we got a new child now, Takoya, is Takoya Gransom, I think is her name. Uh, T A Q U. Y A. What y'all think that is, Takoya? <laughs> y'all new niggas in these names, y'all. So anyway, evidently she was a friend of Solange. I don't really know the scope of the friendship, if they were just acquaintances or if they were really for real friends, but um, she was friends with Solange and um, Matthew Knowles knew that she was friends with Solange. That's probably how he met the girl and behind Solange's back, um, old Matthew Knowles was knocking the boots. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. I don't know if I can say it. Look, goddamn it. I'm gonna spread these goddamn worms everywhere I can. <laughs> he just he old and he fucking y'all. That's what you see y'all men out there. Y'all can get that shit popping as long as you want, huh? You got these motherfuckers 80 years old with these damn babies. Uh Ronald Isley 
Ronald, Ronald Isley has got to be around my dad's age. My dad is 76 years old, and he's got this wife who actually reminds me of Tamar Braxton. Real pretty girl. Cute girl. She sings and everything. I think she actually sings with him. We saw him at in concert not too long ago, but he got this four-year-old baby, and I just, you know, just when I think of my mind, you know, Ronald Isley, you know, he jumping on top of, humping up down on top of some woman, you know, fucking old, like, you know, I think, I know what my dad has to go through. My dad has doesn't have dentures and shit, but my dad is still an older man, okay? He an old man. He ain't older. He is old, okay? He got liniment and shit, you know? He got his own special ways, you know? He got the fucking heater on, you know? It's just... I can't, as no 30-some-year-old woman, imagine being with somebody like my dad. I can't. I love my dad to death. I mean, I would take care of him if I needed to, but that's because he's my father, not because I'm with him, okay? And just some, just an old man just fucking you. Sorry, y'all. I just, ugh. I mean, if we old, we need to be fucking old together. And I mean that literally. Like, we fucking two old folks fucking together. <laughs> I'm getting off y'all but that Matthew knows I mean he ain't that old but he too fucking old to be getting everybody goddamn pregnant nigga you can't put a fucking condom on the hell is going on here so yeah this girl Takoya she went to court the other day and you know applied for him to have to take a DNA test I guess he's denying that the baby is his she wants him to get child support honey I can tell you right now you about to get $18 a month and Matthew knows they ain't got no fucking money no more all y'all out here getting pregnant by that old ass motherfucker he ain't got nothing to give to y'all okay but a baby and that's it okay it's a damn heartache yeah so we'll see we definitely gonna keep our eye on this story find out if you know uh, Beyonce and Solange got yet another sibling that they need to get a Christmas present to. <laughs> and Matthew said, fuck it, I'm fucking. <laughs>even you know i don't follow Maybach music group and i mean you, uh, no more than the average person that just hears them on the radio i mean i know who rick ross is i know who wale is and i know who meek mill is but that is the extent of what i know about the group okay just from me watching in i never felt like wale fit with the rest of them okay because they're all about this whole you know street street you know, you know, gangsta, you know, I'm a boss kind of thing. And Wale has always kind of given me the feel of being more poetic, more art inspired, more, you know, more, just a different type of way. So it was always interesting that Wale was in that group. Now, originally, I think Wale was there. Y'all don't even be quoting me and telling me, you know, I'm not I just told you I don't know shit about this, but I'm just thinking. Wale was with Rick Ross before Mick, Meek Mill showed up, right? I just is kind of what I think. And Wale was real big at one time, but we also know that Wale has like kind of like a bad attitude. We've heard about him kind of treating that chick that sang in that song bad. Yeah, I think that girl that sang the song, they said he mistreated that girl real bad, and she ended up off going off to somebody else. Um, my son has even told me that he's been at the gym with Wale, and they were playing basketball. He said Wale is crazy. Like, he'd be yelling and screaming and being mad and all of this and fussing and raising all kind of hell over there. So, yeah, Wale is supposed to be something special. And then we had Meek Mill come and join, I guess, up with Rick Ross. And um, even though he got there after Wale, I think Meek Mill got his own label and all of that. So there might have been some animosity between Wale and Meek Mill, okay? And, and, and it seemed like Rick Ross has, has taken more to Meek Mill. You see Meek Mill and Rick Ross and now French Montana and Puffy and all of them always together. And kind of Wale, I mean, you know, Wale can stand on his own or whatever, but he probably kind of feels like it's him against them. So... All that being said, it's been all kind of other shit. The little teeny tiny things that have happened over the years where it's looked like Wale and Meek Mill have been competing against each other. Well, now Meek Mill evidently has a album that's coming out. And um, he got in his feelings real tough the other day and got upset that um, Wale hadn't 
tweeted or Instagrammed anything about the album coming out. Now then, Wale came back and said, well, listen, I don't have no problem saying anything about your album. The album don't come out till October. I was trying to wait till it was closer to, you know, the, the album release. Why would I be talking about it right now? The shit still got four months, you know, three, four months to come out, which makes sense. I mean, he said that, you know, he mentioned things about this album a while ago and you know, it's a whole bunch of childish hurt feelings and, you know, emotions. Kind of some old bitch made shit a little bit there. Um, but it's probably more stuff to it. But that's just kind of the, 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 the tip of the of the iceberg and kind of how I feel when I think about Wale and Meek Mill. Um, and just reading about them on the internet and then just kind of thinking about the music that they have and then, you know, the relationship that Rick Ross seems to have with each of them. So... <clears throat> I think that's what it is. If I'm wrong, you guys go on and add more to it. But I think that's what it is. I mean, I, I like Wale's music probably more than I like Meek Mill's music. I actually loved Wale's CD that had... Um, what, what, what CD was? Not this one with Bad on it, but the other one. The one before that. that was a, it was a great CD and I loved it. What, 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 did it have Bad on it? Y'all don't... <laughs> Y'all, this memory be so fucked up. But I mean, I'm, I tend to like Wale's music a little bit more than Meek Mill. But you know, I like Mil Meek Mill with all that fucking screaming and stress and everything. He he just make me nervous when I hear his music. He just so yelling and rushing. And... Anyway, y'all, tell me whose side you on. Do you guys understand the beef between the two of them? Do you think it's unnecessary? I mean, it's definitely enough room for everybody. I don't know why we got to be fighting. I wish people would just get along. <laughs> All right, I already kind of talked about The View before, but I guess I can talk about it again because Rosie O'Donnell is coming back. I already talked about the fact that Sherry Shepard is leaving the show. And uh, Sherry needs to leave because she got to deal with this foolishness with this fucked up ass, you know, soon to be ex-husband who is trying to get custody of this surrogate baby and get child support. And now we find out the damn baby is not even from her age. So Sherry's just like, look, he can take him, that surrogate mama, that goddamn baby and go over there somewhere. Cause none of that is mine. And, um, I feel like I was tricked into doing this just because he knew that he was going to file for all of this and take the baby and try to get money out of me. So Sherry got her own damn problems over there. Okay. Girl, go on, figure that shit out. Okay. And then when you pick your next husband, you get a nigga that got some fucking money a goddamn job okay didn't i tell you guys that with each man needs to be a step up right okay what the fuck does sal ever do i mean did the nigga ever work i'm gonna talk about he a writer what fuck he write i'm talking about since they've been together we ain't seen sal do nothing but be sal yeah sherry's gone but um rosie o'donnell is coming back i'm not a big rosie o'donnell fan um but I see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get the opinionated, real extreme opinionated persons back on the panel. Because it had gotten to the point on the show where everybody just got along and there was never any kind of, um, <clears throat> you know, there was never any kind of action on the show. Because it gets boring when everybody agrees. Okay, even though we say we don't like to see women fighting and arguing and all of that, we want to see some tension there. So, Rosie O'Donnell is going to be back. But, you know, they have to have an Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Not necessarily her. I don't think she would come back, especially with Rosie being there. And I don't even think they would try to bring her back. But they need to have somebody like her for Rosie O'Donnell to go against. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg and Rosie O'Donnell is not going to go against each other. I was watching an interview with Joy Bayard on CNN with Don Lemon yesterday. Don Lemon looks just like my friend's son, <laughs> Lil Cody. I tell you, Lil Cody gonna look just like Don Lemon Simone when he gets bigger. But anyway, and she was just saying how the show, when it originally came out, was just supposed to be the opinion of women. You know, women sitting around talking at the table, having a coffee, and just kind of expressing themselves. And, you know, it wasn't supposed to be this whole politically charged, um, you know, motivated show where everybody's arguing about their different you know, standpoints on things like that. It was just supposed to be women getting together and just having a talk. But that's what the show became, and then it got away from that. In my opinion, The View is tired. It's time for the show to go, okay? We just don't... It's too many other shows out like it that are, might even be better. Um, and you got all these old-ass people on there. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I mean, Rosie O'Donnell, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Barbara Walters, even though Barbara Walters is gone. But, you know, you got all these old-ass people giving their opinions. And, yeah, I do. I value the, the opinions of old people all the time. But we need something new, fresh, young, 
and um, the view just just ain't doing it no more so um, we'll see how it goes with Rosie O'Donnell I just kind of feel like the show is on its way out even with them bringing in Rosie O'Donnell I give it a couple more years and I, I think that's gonna probably be it but yeah Rosie O'Donnell's back uh, Whoopi Goldberg is gonna be there and we'll see whoever else they bring on all this talk about Nene not coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. I don't know why we keep on going through this with you guys because they've already said that everybody is coming back to the show. Everybody is coming back to the show. Okay, We're not going to never know what the pay is on everybody so why do y'all keep on even get yourselves all so riled up about this? Who the fuck cares if she got a damn pay cut or not? Okay, and we will never know for sure because ain't nobody showing their contract so I mean what? Okay, but whatever. Nene does stir up a lot of the shit talking too, okay? Just the other day, she tweeted something that said, and I quote, I am not coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta because I was fired. No, I quit. No, I wanted more money. No, they cut my salary. And yes, this is all bullshit. When I read that, I already knew what she meant, okay? She was just kind of going by what the gossip is saying. And, um, you know, no, it's this, no, it's that, no, this is this. But at the end, she said, this is bullshit, which means none of you can't believe nothing that you hear. But people thought that it meant that she was cut, that she got a pay cut, this, that, and the other. I was just like, oh, my gosh, people would just get some damn sense and think about what she said. Now, of course, she didn't need to say none of that. You know, she keeps a lot of shit going as well. We can't just put Nene out of the equation she just should just stay quiet if she don't want people to just keep on asking her and being all in her business like that so but um so yeah you guys she's coming back to the show all of them are coming back everybody okay I don't know what nobody's making but I think everybody is making enough everybody on the damn show okay so that's it and it's gonna be a very interesting year like I said Sherry they're saying that Sherry um Sheree Whitfield is coming back um, and you guys already know that's going to be a very interesting dynamic. Um, so we will see. But yeah, y'all just quit with the whole Nene pay cut. Nene not coming back. Nene will be there. And she would be a fool not to go back. That is her bread and butter. Okay. And until they kick her ass out the door, then honey, she need to sign them contracts and bring it on back every single season. gonna be quick you guys stevie j and jocelyn and all these antics that they've been going through i'm just kind of i'm over it that's i wasn't even gonna talk about it i didn't even talk about it in real in the um loving hip-hop um review because it's just stupid you know stevie j uh supposedly hacked her account was putting all this shit saying she was fucking rick ross and nelly and um kevin durant and you know was pregnant by rick ross and you know 30 rappers and you know, saying all this stupid shit, and supposedly he was at his wit's end, and he was gonna kill himself. And Benzino was saying, you know, I can't get in touch with my brother, and I hope he don't do nothing stupid. You know, Stevie J tweeting shit like goodbye world, and his family couldn't reach it. Just all this retarded shit, and then all of a sudden, Jocelyn comes out and says her her account was hacked. You know, and then all of a sudden, her and Stevie J are back together. You know just as is, is two peas in a pod and happy and all this bullshit okay they taking us through all these changes <laughs> absolutely not you ain't fixing to be whipping me all around with all this okay me trying to f follow this story and everything i don't give a fuck okay i already knew it wasn't true none of it you know they just doing it for publicity because like i said stevie j and jocelyn are on the decline people are not really you know all on them like they were last season so when you start to get desperate then you start doing desperate shit like this and to me all this was desperate um so as if somebody wanted me to talk about them it's gonna be it's always some shit with them and this is just more the same all right you guys that's it we do this every week make sure you rate comment and subscribe and make sure that you come back Until next time, rock stars. Bye.